We now return to Corrosion and Decomposition on Modern Marbles. Plastic. It's everywhere. The world produces 110 million tons of it each year, and only 1% of that is recycled. What happens to the rest of our discarded plastic? Unlike metals, plastics don't corrode. They don't even rot. But they do break down when exposed to sunlight through a process known as photodegradation. Ultraviolet radiation in sunlight causes chemical compounds called polymers to crosslink. This makes the plastic brittle, allowing it to break down into smaller and smaller pieces. You can think of it in terms of the vinyl uh, uh, top on a car or the vinyl uh, dashboard in a car. If you don't put your uh, armor all on it and, and resist the UV degradation, it becomes embrittled, it crosslinks, and it cracks. Captain Charles Moore understands plastic. For over a decade, he studied it as it collects in an area known as the North Pacific Gyre. That's where plastics go to die. It's easily 10 million square miles in extent and the size of the continent of Africa. The North Pacific subtropical gyre is a circular current that's caused by a high pressure system. It circulates in a clockwise direction and pushes down near the center and creates a lower sea level. So you get this kind of a toilet bowl effect of currents that pull debris from the Pacific Rim and bring it into the central part of the North Pacific. Anything that floats will make it into the North Pacific subtropical gyre, everything from refrigerators to toothbrushes. Predominantly, what we see out there is broken down bits of consumer plastics that are now outweighing, and in some cases, even outnumbering the natural food out there. Plastics can take up to five years to journey from North America to the gyre, breaking down through photo degradation during their journey to create a plastic soup. Captain Moore and his crew aboard the research vessel Alguido trawl the gyre surface with a one-third millimeter mesh net to gather samples for their study. Documented, this is the first one of the repeat survey. We would expect our trawls to be something in the order of 100 times as bad as they were in 1999. This appears to be what we're finding. The problem is more than just a scenic blight on this remote area of ocean. Plastic is making its way into the food chain. Millions of seabirds, marine mammals, and fish die each year by ingesting or becoming ensnared in plastic refuse. The chemicals that are transmitted up the food chain to fish that we consume is a concern. It's a concern for our own health. Research suggests that toxins found in fish that consume plastics can be linked to cancer, liver damage, and reproductive problems in humans who eat tainted fish. This stuff got a lifetime on the order of centuries, and no one alive today or their children or their children's children will be in an ocean free from this pollution. We've got to stop putting it in. Unlike plastics that slowly photodegrade, 